must have worked really hard. He wasn't even finished digging the huge gaping moat in the front, but it was already enormous. You got the sense from the enthusiasm he was digging with that the doctor was probably going to find a bunch of sand when he finally removed the pink plaster. The silence was broken. What's on top of your Shiloh? You peeked closer and discovered something shiny sticking out of Shiloh's sand chimney. Oh, it's just a gum wrapper. It looks like smoke. Neat. It's good. That's smart. Yeah, I didn't think of that. I guess I don't see it. <laughs> you should be an architect. <laughs> Kinda looks like a worm. Let's give him a major compliment and say you should be an architect. <sighs> You'd be good at it, Shiloh, based on that gum wrapper in the sand. <laughs> Shiloh smiled without a word, and that was that for the current topic. I wonder if he's gonna become an architect now. Paige, can I see what you did? Sure. He scooted just a bit nearer and began surveying your work. The castle you built was pretty impressive, if I do say so myself. All things considered, it had archways, tall walls, and even a little moat circling it. Very posh. You would probably feel safe living there. Maybe your moms were the queens. Shiloh quickly decided to jump in the new conversation. Hey, Paige, what did you do? I made a castle. Shiloh didn't look so happy anymore. You both built castles. Yeah. Ah, oh, that's neat how you guys match. It's too bad we didn't all do it. Next time we should. Wouldn't that be boring? If something is the only one of that thing that makes it special. Yeah for sandcastles and stuff. People do. My dad always says how everybody is their own man, a real individual. I don't think I'm very special. Shiloh's so cute. Why not? Nobody else is you. Words of wisdom go of words of wisdom. Shiloh simply shook his head. I'm not different. A beat passed between the two. Gov then looked at his own work again. Mm, okay. He didn't seem to be bothered leaving the disagreement hanging there. Gove had other, <laughs> other things on his mind. My dad tried to get me to make sand castles the first time we came to this beach. Huh. I didn't want to. Gove trailed up again. There was, like, Gov trailed off. Again, there was another moment of silence. Shiloh shifted and opened his mouth to say something, but Gov spoke up before he could. You didn't think he noticed that Shiloh was going to talk. Hey, do you know what happened when your moms met my dad, Paige? You blinked, not expecting the question. You thought hard. I wasn't there. They didn't tell me. I just remember what happened when I met your dad. He bribed me to be your friend. Mr. Holden had been a weird stranger then. Well, he was still kind of strange. No other parent acted like him, but you knew him better at this point. Now that you thought about it, it made a lot of sense that Gov's dad talked to him about people being unique. You were pulled from your thoughts when Gov continued. Oh. oh, well, I was there. I don't think my mom has met your dad. Yeah, I'm pretty sure she hasn't. Paige's parents and my dad met the same day I met her. I'm gonna say what happened. Shiloh frowned to himself, ducking his head. His hat cast a shadow over his face. He could still tell he was upset at not being included in Gov's choice of topic. That was kind of boring for him, though giving people their own turn to say the things they want is important. You stayed silent and let go finish his story. I think Shiloh wants to talk too. Oh, shoot. You know what? I feel like we should give Shiloh his little moment, you know? He's really shy and he doesn't open up easily. Gov can talk to Paige all day another day. Let's give Shiloh.
Shiloh some time. Oh, we were talking just now, right now. I'm talking to you. He can listen. Cove is rude as fuck. Shiloh's expression barely flickered at the words. He still looked put off. I would be too. Cove, get hold of yourself. Cove continued like... <laughs> Cove continued like the interruption hadn't happened. He was determined to tell the tell. I tried, Shiloh. I tried. Cove's too into himself right now. When we moved here, we didn't bring a lot of things with us. Only some stuff that would fit in Dad's car. We didn't even get a moving truck. I sat there while Dad brought it all inside. I didn't want to get out because I knew Dad would make me look around the new house. I really didn't want to do that. His lips twisted into a frown as he recalled that. Then I saw your moms. They were in a car too and stopped at your house. I guess they were coming back from somewhere or something. My dad noticed. He waved his hand, then went over to the front of your house, where he started talking to them. I don't know what they said, I couldn't hear it. But he couldn't see me anymore since he was looking the other way. So I opened the door and left. I wanted to get away and went behind the houses. I found those hills there, the ones where we met for the first time. They just was like, mm hmm, I guess you're talking at me. Cove nodded and stared at you. You stared back. He didn't go on to say anything more. Is that it? Cove's brow wrinkled like he didn't understand why you were surprised. Huh? That's all that happened. Look at poor Shiloh over here with his eyes closed, feeling bad about himself. Jesus. Okay, why did you want to tell the story if nothing happened? You really gotta get better at telling stories. That was a pretty bad story. Thanks for telling me. Shit, I don't know what to say. I feel like he was totally rude right now, and that story was pretty irrelevant. Um, I'm just gonna say, okay. <laughs> what is it? What? You said that in a weird way. Did I? Cuff narrowed his eyes at you suspicious. Well, you're a rude motherfucker. Shiloh's mouth twisted into a scowl of disbelief, but he said nothing. Why'd you bring that up anyway? There was a slight shrug of Cove's shoulders. I was thinking about it because of the sandcastle. It made me remember when I moved to here. Dad showed me the beach first, before we went back to the car to unpack. He was really excited about it for some reason. Cove's brows furrowed a little more as he quietly raked his hands through the sand. I get it. You thought maybe Mr. Holden wasn't that excited about the beach and was instead hoping Cove might be. But the line of conversation had come to its end, even Cove was done with it. Some other topic had popped into his head. Shiloh, fidgeting uncomfortably in the sand, had made Cove aware of his presence again. They looked at each other, and you could only wonder what this might be about. Hey, Shiloh. Yeah? Why are you always turning so red, even when nothing is happening? Rude motherfucker. Oh my god. Clearly startled, he jerked back. Neither you or Shiloh had expected that to be how he, he got included in the conversation again. I don't know, I guess. Okay, it's kind of weird. Shiloh's eyes were wide with embarrassment and his lips twitched. And he was blushing even harder than before. I'm about to slap go. <laughs> Maybe it wasn't only this. Perhaps it was simply the last straw. But it was a big deal to Shiloh, a huge deal. He didn't just look sad, he seemed almost panicked. You weren't sure if he was about to cry or run away or what, but you soon got an answer. Oh, 
snap. Why do you wear glasses? Most kids don't wear glasses and nobody is named Cove. <laughs> Who asked you to come? It was probably just your dad bugging Paige's family some more because you don't have anyone else who will ever play with you. Damn. Shut up. <laughs> um, Cove blinked. The tension on the page was suddenly uncomfortable in a way you didn't know how to even mention. It didn't seem like the kind of thing he'd get upset about, though you hadn't ever known what kind of thing would bother Shiloh. I'm sorry. Me too. I was just wondering. Hey, let's build another sandcastle. You tried to play on your own. <laughs> That's hilarious. Uh, are we gonna build more? You nervously messed with the sand. Okay, uh, so Paige is supposed to be shy. Um, so I'm just gonna have her... I'm gonna have her mess with the sand nervously. You picked up some sand and turned it over in your hands. There didn't seem to be much you could do to stop the fight, and you weren't sure what to do with yourself. Cove looked over at what you were doing and started building his own set of walls. Shiloh took a breath before kneeling back down to his own patch of sand. It seemed they both decided to try playing again. You were glad for that. For real. You all went back to making more sand buildings, but the whole mood had changed. Awkward. Shiloh's cheeriness was clearly gone, and Cove looked as confused as ever about why the other boy had blown up. I hope I get the choice to tell Cove he's rude as fuck. The air stayed uncomfortable the rest of the afternoon, right up to the moment that Shiloh's mom appeared at the beach to take him home. Cove and Shiloh had mostly followed your lead and barely said a word. His mom standing behind him, even Shiloh's goodbye had been quiet. Friendly, cheerful, but noticeably quiet. But with Shiloh gone and the sun going down, you knew it was time for you and Cove to head to your own houses. You followed him as he made his way out of the sand. The walk home was quiet. You passed by familiar landmarks, shoes thumping against the sidewalk in near perfect unison. Cove was clearly caught up in thinking about something. You ask Cove what he's thinking. You stay silent. I'm not asking what he's thinking. The prospect of asking made you nervous, but you did anyway. Hey, is everything, um, okay? Mm. Oh, I was just wondering. Go fell silent again for a few more seconds, then sighed. Mm. Why'd Shiloh act like that when I said he was all red a lot? Yes, I get the fucking... I need to tell him. You were being rude as fuck. He's just being a baby. You shouldn't make fun of him. I don't know, it's just Shiloh. He gets embarrassed. You shocked at Cove with no answer to give. Uh-uh, he needs to know. You were being rude to him. No, I wasn't. It looked like that to me, and I wasn't just saying that one thing. You're not very nice to Shiloh. I didn't mean it like that. Shiloh is kind of weird to talk to. See, that's kind of rude. Yes, I can get it. Why he would do that? Sometimes I get really mad too. Despite seemingly coming to a conclusion, Cove's mood was still sour. Um. Hey, Paige, was Shiloh telling the truth? Huh? <laughs> his gaze left yours as he dug the sole of his shoe into the ground. He looked oddly vulnerable for a second. Does my dad make you hang out with me? Oh no. I know he talks to your moms about that a lot. An uncomfortable weight to settled in your chest at the question. You liked spending time with Cove. You didn't even have to think hard about it. You knew you did. But you couldn't help feeling guilty. Cove still didn't know what happened when you met Mr. Holden. <laughs> Nobody's making me spend time with you. Your dad does do stuff so you hang out with my family. But Shiloh shouldn't have said that. You decided to tell him about his dad offering you money. Uh, I think that's a terrible idea, to be honest with him about the money. You 
he's a very sensitive kid. He'll probably run off crying. So I'm just gonna say, nobody is making me spend time with you. Cove's shoulders relaxed. You hadn't even noticed that he had tensed up. Yeah, that's what I thought too. Anyway, I didn't think you were pretending. I just wanted to make sure it was okay is all. I just needed that validation. Thanks for telling me. Your throat tightened. It was hard to meet Ko's earnest gaze again. <laughs> Keeping secrets was hard. Ain't that the truth? Yeah. By now, the two of you were on the sidewalk near your houses. It was time to part ways. You hugged Ko goodbye. You nudged Ko's shoulder. You said goodbye. I'm gonna hug him. Another yellow option. You stepped forward and wrapped your arms around him tightly. You turned your head, resting your cheek on his shoulder. I must be really short. Cove stood there awkwardly with his hands at his sides. Oh wait, no, I guess I'm not short. He wasn't able to return the hug, but you didn't get the impression he was unhappy about it. You're pretty sure it was the opposite. Bye, Cove. Oh, bye, Cove. See you tomorrow. Yeah, bye, Paige. You pulled away, then jogged towards your house. When you looked back, you saw Gov making his way back home, too. As if he felt your eyes on him, he turned around. He waved. You did, too. You still felt a little unsure with what you were supposed to do about the deal Gov's dad had offered. You didn't want to say something bad or something you shouldn't. You had no idea how Gov would take it either. a short one and we only have one more before we are 13 <laughs> all right guys thanks so much for hanging with me today i will see